So Ryzen CPUs have been out for a while now, and so far the story has been pretty good, especially in the multi-core performance and overclocking departments. But there's another side of the equation that could be just as important depending on the type of stuff you want to use your system for. Motherboards. Because C CPUs plug into the into motherboards, so that's what we're going to talk about. Basically, this video is going to be about the capabilities of and differences between the new chipsets that support AMD Ryzen, that being X370, B350, A320, X300, and A-B300. Now, obviously, if you're going for just as high-end as you can get, you'll want an X370, but for the budget-conscious and business-minded, you can save a bit of cash by getting a board that has everything you need and nothing you don't. Like... Gatorade. So, let's start with some background. Ryzen CPUs use the new AM4 socket. It replaces AMD's previous high-end socket, AM3+. While its predecessor had 942 pins, AM4 ups the count to 1,331. I should say pin holes, because as some of you may know, AMD processors have pins protruding from the bottom, which fit into the socket rather than using Intel's method of having flat contacts on the bottom which rest on the motherboard's pins. In terms of coolers, AM4 has different dimensions than AM3+, so previous gen coolers are incompatible. However, lots of manufacturers do offer free adapter kits, and some motherboard makers are even including AM3 mounting holes, so you may not have to buy a whole new cooler if you upgrade to Ryzen. Now, Ryzen breaks the mold a bit when it comes to which features are built into the processor as opposed to the chipset. A lot of modern CPUs support DDR4 and PCI Express directly through the chip, but Ryzen adds bandwidth for four USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports and four PCIe 3.0 lanes that can be used for either a single M.2 NVMe SSD or two SATA drives with two extra lanes for other devices. Pulling some extra features normally reserved for the chipset into the CPU saves it from having to share bandwidth with uh, other chipset features, and it also makes Ryzen more of a system on a chip than we've seen with a lot of other desktop CPUs. Speaking of those features, let's get to the new AM4 chipsets. As I said, X370 is the flagship. It's got support for overclocking, multi-GPU configurations, and it has the most combined USB lanes and SATA ports. Keep in mind, while looking at the PCIe and USB capabilities of these chipsets, the total number is going to be combined with the CPU's capabilities. So while X370 supports two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, six 3.0 ports, and six 2.0 ports, the Ryzen 7 chips have additional support for four USB 3.1 Gen and one port, so you can have a total of 12 USB 3.0 capable ports. <sighs> When AMD releases more AM4 capable processors later, like the Athlon and A-series APUs, you'll have to combine their native USB support with your motherboards to understand their full capacity. Now, on top of the native capabilities, though, as always, motherboard manufacturers will add their own features as well. The MSI X370 X-Power Gaming Titanium, for example, has reinforced DDR4 and PCIe slots, two M.2 slots, and an extra four-pin power connector at the top and six-pin at the bottom to provide some extra juice for overclocking CPUs and graphics cards, respectively. Now this board splits the X370 chipset's two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports into one USB Type-A and one USB Type-C for more versatility. And if you're into LEDs, there's a dedicated header for one of those so you can coordinate your lighting with MSI Mystic Light compatible products. But on to the other chipsets. Now, B350 is second in overall power to X370. It also supports overclocking, but does not have support for multi-GPU, with a single PCIe 3.0 X16 configuration where the X370 can split its lanes into two X8 paths. It also loses two SATA 3 lanes, two PCIe 2.0 lanes, and four USB 3.0 ports, but what it's left with should be more than enough for the casual gamer and even budget overclockers. Now, the A320 comes in behind B350, losing the ability to overclock another two PCIe lanes and one USB 3.1 Gen 2 port. This chipset would probably be best suited towards business users or HTPCs. A320, B350, and X370 all support RAID 0, 1, and 10. No support for RAID 5, unfortunately. Now, the last two chipsets are a bit more curious, X300 and A-B300. These are specifically designed for SFF, or small form factor systems, and it appears that this means both MATX and MITX, although with Ryzen's built-in SATA and NVMe controllers, maybe we'll even see a Nano ITX version? Don't take my word for that, it's speculation at this point, but 
That said, there are also MATX versions of B350 and A320 as well. X300 has similarities to X370. It's the only other chipset that supports both overclocking and multi-GPU configurations, but it's got slightly less of everything else. Four PCIe 2 lanes, four USB 3 ports, two SATA ports, or one SATA E port. And that's actually the exact same for A and B300. The only difference between them and X300 is support for overclocking and multi-GPU. A and B300 don't have that. Both SFF chipsets also only support RAID 0 and 1. So that's about it guys, hopefully that gave you some idea of what chipset you should be looking at for your Ryzen build. Super all out enthusiast, probably X370, budget gamers, B350 or A320, and for tiny systems, X300 and A slash B300. Let us know in the comments which one you are gonna get or which one you've already gotten if you have a Ryzen rig up and running. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Click over here for previous videos. Check us out on Twitter over here. But as always, like the video if you liked it, comment below for fans with benefits, and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. Now, I will venture back into the blue from whence I came.